Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Scott Silveri, S-C-O-T-T, -T, last name S-I-L-V-E-R-I-I. -I. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Thibodeau. We appreciate everyone coming out. Uh, we wanted to give an update uh, press conference on the, uh, on the homicide involving the victim of Jory Lerett. Uh, the facts that we have at this time were, again, our victim was Jory Lerett, a uh, white male, uh, date, of birth, uh, date of birth 4804 who was out at 414 West 7th Street in Thibodeau. The father, who was also the suspect, is a Jeremiah Wright, same address, white male, uh, date of birth 62281. And the mother is Jesslyn Lerett, white female, uh, date of birth 5384, also at the same address. <clears throat> As I said earlier, the suspect is the father, um, Jeremiah Wright. What we know about Jeremiah at this time was he had served previously nine years in the military in the National Guard. He was honorably discharged in 2009. <clears throat> he was a graduate of Thibodeau High School. And as I said, he's resided at 414 West 7th Street until May 2011. <clears throat> the incident, the facts that we've, we've been able to uncover to this point was at approximately 12.15 yesterday, uh, the Thibodeau Police Department was notified that a passerby was traveling down West 7th Street and saw what he thought was possibly a, a human head uh, laying next to the road. The officer stopped to investigate, uh, called another um, supervisor and who was able to confirm that they thought it was what they believed to be a human head laying on the side of the road. Um, they, can, they encountered Mr. Wright, who was on the porch, uh, just watching the officer's actions and it actually uh, told the officers that it was a CPR dummy, that the head was a CPR dummy. Upon, uh, like I said, point further, inspection they identified that it was a human a human head uh, as I saw other officers got there to begin the investigation the, uh, they identified uh, the remains of what they believed uh, the child's body in a, in a garbage bag laying next to the head <clears throat> uh, the detectives took right into custody uh, for questioning brought him back to the Thibodeau Police Department and it was during the interview process that Wright confessed to having killed the child uh, no he also he made it very clear that there was no one else at the time and that he acted alone uh, in, in committing the, uh, the, homicide, the murder. Uh, we obtained an arrest warrant. Uh, Judge Mark Chasson, City Court Judge Mark Chasson, signed a, an arrest warrant for first degree murder with a $5 million bond. And Wright was transported to Lafourche Parish Detention Center, where he remains today. He's scheduled to have a, a, um, an arraignment hearing uh, later this afternoon. Um, the Lafourche Parish Coroner's Office came on scene. They secured the, uh, the body, the remains of Jory. Uh, they transport him to Jefferson Parish for an autopsy. Uh, the preliminary report was the cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma to the head with extensive bleeding to the right side of the brain, uh, decapitation and dismemberment. And the manner of death was homicide. Uh, that's currently the facts that we know at this time. As I said, Jeremiah Wright remains at the uh, Lafourche Parish Detention Center being held on a $5 million bond uh, for the charge of first degree murder. Yes, sir. One force comments that they had, and this may be somewhat of a, a gruesome question, and I apologize. So the child was deceased when it was decapitated and dismembered? We're waiting for the final report from the coroner's office, uh, exactly the, the chronology of when the, uh, the blunt force occurred versus the death. Um, that, that'll be forthcoming in the coroner's final report. Has there been any um, previous incidents with violence in the household with the child, with Jeremiah, that you guys can tell us about? All, we have a report of last month, almost a month to the day. Uh, the police, the Thibodeau Police Department was called to the location in reference to a disturbance. Uh, when officers arrived there, they investigated the complaint, and it was a verbal confrontation, I believe over money, but there was no physical violence involved in the altercation. Martin? Did he give you any reason why? Did he go into detail or anything of that nature? No, sir. No, sir. What's his past look like? I'm sorry? What's his past? His criminal history? Um, we looked into his history. He had a couple... Uh, just a, a few arrests. I think there was a theft, um, maybe a burglary charge. But we, 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 were able to, we weren't able to identify anything of violence, uh, heinous criminal behavior, violence. Chief, have you recovered any kind of weapons? We have, we processed the entire scene. We, we've recovered items, tools, uh, implements that may have been used. But uh, again, until we have the coroner's official final report, uh, we, we, we don't want to speculate what may have actually been the tool to cause the damage to the child. What kind of tools? It was, it was just uh, work tools. Um, there, there were several items, implements that were taken from the house. What was his demeanor like whenever you were interviewing him? 
Uh, uh, he was stoic, uh, emotionless, um, non-confrontational. Uh, Captain Crescione conducted the interview. Um, I, would, I don't want to say cooperative, but I guess stoic would be the best way to describe it. Just essentially said, I did it. He confessed. No, no reason, no reason. No, ma'am. Was like the father? He has been identified as a father. Uh, we're looking into the birth certificate. Uh, and then uh, Jesslyn, the mother, has identified him as the father. He himself identified himself as the father. Uh, but as far as DNA testing to confirm biological, uh, we, have, we don't have that at this point. You know, have you all uncovered any sort of mental illness history or any problems in front of Apparently they reported that he had been hearing voices. Uh, I wasn't aware of that, but at this time we've, we've encountered nothing to show that he's had, um, he's an emotionally disturbed person. Uh, again, we, we just affected the arrest late last night. Uh, we're starting what's going to be a very thorough and comprehensive investigation. Um, investigation to his background, his past behaviors, associates, uh, friends, workers, co-workers. Uh, if it were to come to fruition throughout the course of that investigation, it would. But at this point, no, ma'am. Yeah, how shocked were you when you found out? I'm sorry, Martin. How shocked were you to hear this coming? Well, uh, I just stepped out of church. So you go from one environment to the other. and. Uh, I was I was very shocked, uh, as as is the community. Um, you know, the mayor and I talked yesterday and several times throughout the night. And uh, if there's any positive to take from this, is that the community was absolutely shocked. It just shows that that we're not desensitized to things like this. It's a very caring and concerned community. There was a report about I think you took some instruments from the scene, but there was a report of a meat cleaver being used. I'm sorry. There was a report of a, of a meat cleaver being used. Was that one of the instruments you guys? Taken or are you at liberty to say? No, sir, I'm not at liberty to say, but I haven't heard that, even through speculation. I'm sorry. Where did the killing take place? Inside the residence yeah. at 414. Mm -hmm. um, we've identified the crime scene as being in the kitchen around the sink area. What do we know about the boy, his background, involvement in school, anything like that? I know uh, he had yes, I, I tell you, Ms. Joanna Matthews, who's the superintendent of the Foolish Parish School Board, uh, she came out on scene yesterday. Uh, obviously, they had they had some um, grief counseling and some teams that were that were going to be mobilized. Uh, she was able to share some wonderful stories, um, and she'll come up in, in just a moment. Uh, what we were able to identify was he's seven years old. He was confined to a wheelchair, uh, regularly used a feeding tube. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful child from everything that we've learned. I know that uh, this is probably a, a question for the district attorney, but in a case like this, you know, a lot of times they refer back to local police. Mm -hmm. It's a death penalty eligible offense. We're going to push that absolute due process is, is, is afforded to the individual. Um, we, we've arrested him on a first degree murder, which that would be a capital offense. Um, we're, we're going to, at this point, we're going to work uh, with the district attorney and we'll absolutely support whatever decision he, in, in consultation with the family, come up with. Do you think there'll be outcry because of people today who express their interest in the possibility of the death penalty being something that would be suitable if convicted of these Sure. Well, I think it's just natural. I mean, your natural outcries, you, you want vengeance, you want, you know, an eye for an eye. But uh, again, the, due, the process of due process is what's afforded to everyone, regardless how heinous the crime is. Okay, how, how long did it take him to confess yesterday? Was this something that took hours, or did he just walk right in and just admit to doing it? Right. Very quickly. Very quickly, Very quickly that he confessed. Like sitting him down and talking to him? The officers confronted him on the on the scene. He was actually standing on the railing overlooking the garbage bags that held the body and, and actually with a head laid on the road un, um, unexposed. Uh, the officers confronted him. That's where he made the initial comment that uh, it was just a CPR dummy. Um, <clears throat> once they took him into custody, Captain Crescione came back to the police department, advised him of his rights, um, and, and then just within a matter of probably within 30 minutes uh, that, he, that he confessed. He was standing at the house. He was standing, leaning over the porch railing. Did he go easily? Did he resist a lot? He, he, was, he was compliant. He was very, very, um, very stoic. Do you have any idea on the timeline yesterday, how long he was alone with Jerry? He had indicated about 30 minutes. Uh, that, was, that was from his, I guess, chronology of the events. Again, when the final coroner's report comes out, we'll be able to make a better determination on the, uh, on, on the time of death. 30 minutes from the time the mom left to the time the body was found? Yes. Again, that was his recollection. Mm -hmm. 
We understand the state was sent to the state police crime lab. Any idea on what you expect investigators to find when they start examining that change? Or is that just standard procedure? Standard procedure. Everything that we, we take in, uh, obviously the coroners, they, they take possession of the body. Uh, to do the forensic investigation uh, and everything else crime related uh, you know we're looking for fingerprints blood sp uh, spatter that that's just a standard procedure to go to state police yes ma'am chief i don't want to ask any more questions but how did the head get in the middle of the area did he get in the middle well it wasn't in the middle it was off to the side of the road uh, in a gravel uh, shoulder gravel shoulder uh, and he had placed it there he didn't place it with the rest of the body no ma'am it was separated from the uh, from the body that was contained in, in the white plastic bags did he advise? I'm sorry. Did he tell you why he put it by the sidewalk instead of the bag? No. What did the crime scene look like when it all went in the When it went inside? Uh, well, we, we were um, we processed the outside, obviously. Um, when, when the coroner left with, with the child's body, uh, the detectives obtained a search warrant. We were able to go inside. And, um, and other than the kitchen sink area, I, I, I believe he had, he had made an attempt to clean up the crime scene. Uh, obviously, the detectives used some technology that would show, uh, you know, that where blood had been previously, uh, a chemical composition that shows that when, when light when it illuminates it. Uh, but but it appears that he had made an effort to clean up the crime scene. Did he clean himself up? Was, was, was he? Did he have any? I guess blood on him or his hands, or was he cleaned up? His hands were clean. Uh, we have his clothes. We'll wait on forensics for that. He being held with any special consideration suicide watch. He's in isolation at the Lafourche Parish Sheriff's Office, and we, we've coordinated with them. Obviously, as the case went on, we called him prior to bringing him over there. Mm -hmm. They were able to make provisions for the isolation unit. There's some reports about the notice being that he didn't want to take care of the child anymore. Um, you know, you could ask anything about caring for the child. You know, I, I couldn't confirm. I'm sorry. If there's no other questions for me, if you don't mind, Ms. Joanne Matthews, who's the superintendent of the school board, and also um, Jesslyn Lerett uh, would also like, the, the mother would also like to speak, if it's okay. Ms. Matthews? Ms. Joanne Matthews, she's the uh, superintendent of the Pooch Parish School Board. Good afternoon. It's with a heavy heart for the Fush Parish Schools, for our family, our school community, to be with you this afternoon. As you know, Jory is one of our students at South Thibodeau Elementary. When the school's principal um, heard that there was a possible issue with one of the children, as according to our crisis plan, she did notify the supervisor personnel who contacted me. And I went out on the scene and met with the chief who verified what had happened in the situation. We immediately mobilized our, our crisis plan and began to uh, get people there, school system personnel together, psychologists, social workers, to be prepared uh, for the beginning of school day today. We made sure that we tried to look at where relatives of, of Jory were attending school so that we would have staff members available to be at those schools as well. This is a horrific situation for us. Please note that Jory came to us when he was in pre-K, and many lives have been touched by him, as well as many of our employees have touched his life. So it echoes throughout our school system, and our prayers, our thoughts, are with the family at this time. And also I ask everyone to be with our employees, our students, their family, Again, we are family here in Lafourche Parish. We worked very well together collectively with the city, with the chief and his staff, and we will work together to get past this. It's going to be very difficult for us, but I'd like to, if it's okay with the chief, bring on the school's principal, Ms. Diane Smith, to give you a little insight. I think many of you had some questions about Jewelry, just to tell you a little bit about his smile, his love, uh, that he gave to us. Ms. Smith. Good afternoon. As Ms. Matthews said, Jory came to us in pre-K, so we have had him on our campus now for three complete years. And I think almost all of our students on campus know Jory. Everyone loved him, uh, even though he could not express uh, in words uh, 
his feelings to us, he could with his smile. Um, I personally spoke with him on Thursday and Friday, uh, and we have about 570 students. But for some reason, I, I was able to talk to him on Thursday and Friday, and um, I'm thankful that I did. Um, he, um, he did touch many lives and made us realize how close our school is, our community is, and um, we, will, we will definitely miss him. It's a somber day at our school, but we have had all the pupil appraisal counselors and uh, social workers at school this morning uh, and today to uh, be available if necessary for our faculty and staff as well as our students. Thank you. If you would, uh, his mother, um, Jessalyn, would like to, again, I guess just, just celebrate the joy that, that he was. <clears throat> uh, they're they're going to they're going to see if she's able to come about, but but I do again. I want to thank uh, Miss Matthews and and Mayor Esche. Uh, they've been absolutely compassionate partners throughout the whole process, and they're going to going to continue to be so. My name is Jocelyn Kaylee Rip. My child was Joy Callum, Joseph Lee Rip. He was a very important person in my life. Maybe the bestest thing that ever happened to me. He has touched so many people in this community, from school, to my friends and my family. Between me, my family, and my friends, we ask for the respect and privacy on the situation that has happened to us. We all love Joy very, very much, and he loved us all. He was a very friendly child. He was not shy to strangers. He always smiled. He was happy in life. He would be missed sadly and deeply by all his friends, by all of my friends by all of my family and myself. He was my star. No matter what people think or say, he was always top priority in my life. I've done everything I can for him. And I have taught him well. I love you very much, Joy, and I wish you could be here today, but you're not. Now you're in heaven as an angel. You are a beautiful star, and you will always shine bright inside my heart, inside of everybody's heart. If I could go back and change yesterday, I could, but I can't. You will be missed and loved by everyone. And we will pray every day in your honor. Love your mom.
Um, if there's no other questions, that'll go ahead and conclude our press conference. Again, we, we thank you for coming out to the city of Thibodeau. We thank you for your concern. Uh, just, just wonderful examples of the caring community that we have. Um, so if there's no other questions, we thank you. God bless you.